Blog Talk Radio. Hello, folks. How are you doing? I hope you are doing well. And this is Danny Tisdale, and I'm co-host of the Passions Behind Powerful Women's podcast with C.C. Minton, who's here with me. How are you still doing, C.C.? I'm doing great, Danny. How are you? I'm doing great, too. I have my, my tea right here next to me, so I, I'm ready for the conversation. And as we always do, we speak to leaders, legends, and trailblazers, and that's what we're about to do. Uh, it's all yours, Cece. Yes, I'm actually, I am excited about this month, um, as well as this month's guest. This month is actually uh, National Physical Fitness and Sports Month. And um, yeah. we will have the pleasure of speaking with Angelique Miles. She is definitely a trailblazer. Uh, she's had 20 years in the entertainment industry, um, and she doesn't look a day over 30. She has. Uh, <laughs> I want to know the secret. Herself. I want to know the secret, Angelique. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she has reinvented herself, and um, she is one of the uh, most sought off brand and wellness influencers in the industry. So welcome to the to the show, Angelique. How are you? I'm th- well. Thank you for having me. I'm great, CC and Danny. I, you know, in spite oh, of fantastic. all that's going on, in spite of all that's going on, I'm, you know, I'm doing okay. Good, good. Oh. Um, so, uh, CC and Angelique, I just want you to yeah, know yeah. I'm doing some air push-ups right now. Uh-oh. So, uh, <laughs> as as you speak, I, I'm still preparing. So I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Air, what's an air? What's an air push up? I need. To, I'm not up on that. <laughs> you're not up on that. It's, you you put both push-up. arms out, and then you just push up and down. <laughs> just put both. See, there you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you <say> so. <laughs> See what the quarantine so is doing Angelique. to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Angelique, I really want to um, get started because you have a tremendous career over the past 20 years, and um, I know you started out in the entertainment industry, and could yeah. you just talk a little bit about that, and then I'll ask you some questions also about the difference between managing your stress at that point in time in comparison to today. Okay, yes. I was a a music publishing executive uh, during the golden age of (laughs) hip-hop and R&B, you know, as people call it now. So, you know, during the the poppin' 90s, (laughs) um, I was was signing people to publishing deals like Missy Elliott and Timbaland and uh, Busta Rhymes, um, Anthony Hamilton. People who are still... People, yes, people are still, uh, you know, making a name for themselves today. In fact, um, Missy was just inducted into the Songwriter Hall of Fame last year. That's right. Yeah. So it's always wow, it's, it's, it's right. wonderful to see things that I did, you know, over 20 years ago still still doing well. So, I mean, but right. that's, there was a long list of people I worked with, um, Old Eddie Bastard. Um, hmm. I had songs on... Uh, uh, the Terry Robinson, the, the So For Real single, um, Candy Rain was one of my first top ten songs as a music publisher. Wow. Um, Stevie J, back when he was with the Hitmen, with Puffy, and um, I had Junior Mafia, so I had Little Kim mm. and mm. Steve. Um, yeah, it was, it was a grand old time. It, this is how I was having time yeah. before before nine before nine eleven was just a different time, and now at, before corona before covid is another time mm-hmm. it's, it's two different blocks of time, but before nine eleven the, the world and the music industry in particular was a different place it was unlimited abundance mm-hmm. in, in that world in that, that world pre nine eleven so after nine eleven wow. <laughs> So, so I, know were, I know you were really busy back then, and you're probably just as busy today. Um, but um, so my question is, was the stress differently back then in comparison today? And how does age play into that, if at all? 
Well, it was different. I think it was different for me back then because of, uh, I was a very young executive, and you don't necessarily know how to handle stress when you're young. Mm-hmm. You know, you just you just power through it. You don't know. You might not even know that it's stress. You know, you just get up, you go to work every day. You, you know, I'm learning how to be. You know, at the time, I'm learning how to be an executive, learning corporate America, um, learning the music business, learning. You know, getting to know people, networking. So, I don't look back at it, back at it as stressful in comparison mm-hmm. to some of the things that happened to me later in life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but I'm sure. I mean, well, I'll just say that because of some other things that are happening in my life, like I have, I have an autoimmune condition. Mm-hmm. I have an autoimmune condition. Mm-hmm. I have psoriasis. So. Yeah. During those years, I was always trying to heal my skin. So I, I practiced forms of wellness even back then, before uh-huh. it was a thing. Um, I was doing Ayurvedic um, medicine. I was I, I saw a chiropractor, uh, Dr. Pagano, who has since passed away, who treated people with psoriasis, set us on these really strict diets. I did a lot of research, and I understood that stress could play a part in skin breakouts when you have psoriasis. Mm. So I, I looked into yoga and other forms of um, reducing stress. So for me it was different because I, I had this other condition that I was trying to, to wrangle. So uh-huh. um, it wasn't because of work necessarily, just overall health, health and wellness. So I, I, I guess I did. Yeah, I did practice forms of wellness and self-care that probably reduced my stress. Right. So, so back on the career, the career piece, because this this podcast is about the passion behind powerful women. Please, please let us know how you actually transitioned from a career in the entertainment to becoming one of the top influencers today. Well, thank you for saying that. But um, it wasn't overnight. It took me a long time to figure out. Number one, the music industry wasn't for me anymore, and that took a, mm-hmm. that took a very long time because I was so good at what I did, mm-hmm. when I wasn't able to, you know, get the, get the job or get the signing or get you know just have the same success. It confused me. I'm like, oh, this is mm-hmm. temporary because I'm really good at what I do. My pedigree. I sign this person, that person. I know this person. I know that person. There should be no reason why I'm not still making great money in the music industry. Right. Mm-hmm. One time I had the Midas touch, and then it seemed like nothing I touched, everything I touched crumbled. And mm. um, it took me a long time to figure out, okay, maybe the music industry isn't for me anymore. Cause it, I'm not making any money. No one's hiring me. There, there had been a recession, so the music, mm-hmm. the business shrank. There was uh, the advent of the iPod and all that stuff, so everything shrank. Mm-hmm. Um, or it was different. The, the business I was looking to get back in really no longer existed. Existed. Mm. Right. So um, finally, one day, with, uh, years later, this is, the transition took years. Um, I think it was like the last door slammed in my face, or the last deal that fell through, last person that lied to me about some money that was there. <laughs> mm. um, I Music said, industry. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> So um, yeah. I just said to myself, okay, this is not working out anymore. What do you really want to do? What do you want to get up and do every day? Because I was at mm-hmm. rock bottom financially. So I was like, I might as well do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For this, you know, this, this, I'm going into my, at this point, I'm going into the second half of my life. Why spend the second half of my life doing something I hate doing? Mm-hmm. When, I'm not making any money right now anyway, so whatever I, whatever is next, I have to start from the beginning anyway. So it might as well be something I like to do. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I said I want to wake up every day. I want to work out. I want to practice other forms of self-care and wellness and get paid to do it. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just said that to myself one day, and I, I just, I guess, um, you know, this, by this time Instagram was a thing, and I just started doing things with a purpose. I didn't really know how to articulate the whole influencer thing because, you know, I'm mm-hmm. a little older than most people who are influencers. So 
So mm-hmm. I didn't really know what existed. I just knew that there was something there. Because people would say, you know, people my age were like, why are you taking pictures all the time? <laughs> why are you? <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> uh, like, why are you taking so many pictures? And why are you taking pictures of the food? Like, really? <laughs> and, I, and like, mm-hmm. how do you how do you monetize that? And I'm like, I don't know mm-hmm. how I'm going to monetize it. I just know there's something there. Now those those same people are like, oh, I see. But it's like I said, it was a different world, like a world that. I was just venturing into, so I didn't know. I, I knew it was there, but I didn't know how to articulate mm-hmm. what I, I knew was there. And, you know, young people speak a totally different language than I do. So if I, even if I tried to articulate it, it wouldn't mm-hmm. sound it wouldn't like. Be the yeah. Right. Right. So, um, yeah. you know, it took a while for, you know, to, to build my following. And, and I didn't do it. It was done organically. Mm-hmm. I know some people mm-hmm. come to me now and they ask me, well, how do I become an influencer? I'm like, you don't, um, it's people, other people making an influencer. Like mm-hmm. someone has to say, you influenced me. You can't be like, mm-hmm. I am the, you know, uh, I yeah. influence people. No. <laughs> Anoint <laughs> yourself. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> right. right. It doesn't work that way. You know, I just, I just live my life um, and it resonated with people because most people my age were, you know, getting that, gaining those pounds that you gain at over 40 and the career is different, you know, career life mm-hmm. is different, job life is different, family life is different. So my daily life, sharing my daily life with people resonated. And also right. with younger people. I mean, most, the majority of my followers are younger than I am. And they just want to know, okay, what do I do now to look mm-hmm. like you at 50? So most right. of my followers are younger, but getting back to, it was, it was a long transition and um, I went through a lot of, of drama and strife from people. Cause you know, people like go get a job, do this, you know, cause I wasn't making any <laughs> money at first. And mm-hmm. I just knew that if I, I took some job that I hated, it would distract mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. from what I was really meant to do. I knew I just had to, I just had to, you know, like Muhammad Ali, suffer now than live the rest of your life with a champion. You know, like, I, <laughs> I was like, oh, Which, you know what, you, you touched on it. It's going to pay off. You touched on, Angelique, you touched on something that was very important. And I always say this, too, you know, in the midst of COVID-19, um, nothing is promised. Like, we've all had the rugs pulled from under, under us, if you will. So mm-hmm. if you do need to do something different, um, especially if you need to have um, multiple sources of income, multiple streams, I always say this is the best time to, like, do some of what you really want to do because yeah. nothing is promised. I mean, we're all faithful. Mm-hmm. We all move forward. We're hopeful. But you might as well. You so might as well. that was a great point you what made. What do you have that to lose? Very great yeah, what do you exactly. have to lose? So, so Cece, you're me. saying to, to look at the – the transition in your life as an opportunity to transition your career and see it as an opportunity. Is that what you're uh, both Angelique and CC saying? Yes. As an, as an opportunity to do something you love mm-hmm. instead mm-hmm. of just something that you're to passionate make money. about. Right. right. Something that you're passionate about and instead of something that's just going to make you money. But I found throughout my my work life, even with music. I, at one time, I had a great passion for music, and because I did, I loved what I did, so I mm-hmm. excelled in it. And, and as soon as I didn't have the passion for it anymore, I, I, it, it, it didn't work out. I have passion for what I'm doing now, so it, it's blessed. Like I, I, I excel at it because I. Lo- it doesn't even feel like work to me. Right. Right. So, so you you, you know, wake up, Angelique, and you look forward to. Sounds like you look forward to working and doing what you do. I do. I look forward to um, my morning. I, I you know I meditate. I pray. I get on Instagram right after that, and I um, interact with people. Um, you know, sometimes I get DMs, or if I post that day, people ask questions about what I post. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I like to interact with everyone who bothers who <laughs> to interact with me, um, who, who asks, asks a question. But I spend time on there because it's, you know, 
it's what it's it's a big part of my job. But also, I, I work out. I deal with um, the brands who come to me and want to partner with me. And it, usually, it's brands that I, I'm looking forward to working with and great products. Yeah. And I get That's great. You know, I get to well, test I'm, these amazing products and uh, you know and, and and things. And it's just great. I love it. I'm gonna put the brakes on you because that's the juicy part that we want to hear about. So give us a, a few moments, Danny, do your thing, and then we're going to jump right back in, Angelique. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, thank you, CC. And I just want our listeners to know they're listening to Harlem World Magazine Radio, and we are on with CC Minton and the passion that she speaks to our guests, and the passion behind the Powerful Women podcast that she leads. Uh, don't forget to support what we do, and to don't forget to like us and share us on, on your social. And don't forget to hit that orange button at the bottom and uh, become a patron. Back to Cece and Angelique. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Angelique, this is the, this is the thing. I um I did my I did my research. It was very easy. Everything just popped up right in front of my eyes. So um, my big question is, which of the top brands were you most excited to represent and maybe a little shocked to represent? Or even if Um, it's news coverage uh, in different magazines, I mean, you've been all over the place. I was not a brand, but but I was shocked by British Vogue. I was in British Vogue last year, and that was, big for me like wow. British Vogue um, it was that was um, a great experience also um, working with a brand like BMW was a great experience mainly because I got a car for a month <laughs> wow that's <laughs> great um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but um, who else I, and you were in, on Oprah's in Oprah's magazine right I was. I've been in. Uh, I did a couple of things in OprahMag. dot com, um, mm-hmm. which is different than the book. But the online, um, actually, yeah. I'm doing doing something else with them again this month um, for psoriasis. So, um, also Tory Burch. Mm. I was asked to model for the Tory Burch e commerce catalog. That was big. That was a big deal for me just to become. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. You know, because I I was 50 years old. I have psoriasis. I have a scar on my face. And I was modeling. And years ago, wow. I thought, because I have a scar. That's a whole other story. A scar on my, big scar on my face. And I all of a sudden, I could never model, especially with my skin condition. I could never model. But here, there I was, modeling for major brand designer like Tory Burch. And, mm-hmm. this and showing show. all your realness. <laughs> right, right. They showed mm-hmm. my scar. Um you know, I haven't back then. I didn't have any real psoriasis outbreaks to show, but they they my scar was on full display. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, that um, and of course the beauty brands because uh, I worked with Dove at one time and they came up. They had a product line just for people with eczema and psoriasis. So that was like mm-hmm. a full circle moment for me. Like I'm doing. I'm working with brands who work with me because of my age, because of my skin condition, not in spite Mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I need to break in for a second here. Uh, Angelique and Cece, I'm bald. I've got a bunch of scars all over my body. I'm getting a stomach. Now, how, Angelique, can I turn that into what you've done? I must be missing something because it seems like I should be an influencer <laughs> because I, I'm I'm very real, very very real. Listen, do you share yourself with your you know with a group of people, whoever that tribe is for you? You, you know. There you go. That's what I don't do. Like you, That's what I don't do. Right, That's it. You don't share it. You have to share. So mm-hmm. that is your secret. Share and be be just just share and be authentic with it. Authentic. I don't fake the funk. I don't fake the funk. I take pictures of where I actually am. <laughs> Ouch. Mm-hmm. Not, to, not um, you know, pretending to be someplace I'm not, not to mm-hmm. pretend to be mm-hmm. in a place in my life that I'm not. 
mm-hmm. not pretending to. I'm 53. I'm not tr- not pretending to be 35. Right. I don't want to be right. 35. You know. Um, so just because some people are very shy about telling their age for some reason. Still, Certainly. I don't get yeah. that. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't get it. So I'm very. Um, authentic with where I am in my life at any given moment. Like now, um, I'll be posting more about, I moved into my family home of 50 years. And as you can imagine, yeah. it needs a lot of work. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> but not, not, you know, my you know, my parents lived here for a long time until they moved. And it's, it's I look, I feel like I'm staying at my parents' house for a very long weekend. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm now I'm in the process of painting. Um, I Well, I say I am. I bought all the the, the stuff, but it's still sit, sitting in the same place that I walked in the house in with it. Um, but I'm going to paint. Like now the time for me to really figure out to do th- how to do things on my own. Because before mm-hmm. – the pandemic, I would have called somebody and had them come in and do it. Now I can't mm-hmm. do that, but I want I want it to still look nice, so I have to do it myself. Mm-hmm. Even when it comes to photography, I always hired a photographer to do my shoots. Now right. I have to do them <laughs> myself. Mm-hmm. So um, mm-hmm. for me, the learning experience during this time is learning how to do things myself. Because I am that person who would, if I don't want to do it or I can't do it, that's what other people are for. <laughs> mm-hmm. And know? I can totally relate so. to that because I'm mm-hmm. actually having to do painting and stuff mm-hmm. um, in, in my house that was built in 1846. So it is definitely oh, a, wow. a work wow. in progress. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a, gym, a work you know, in progress. That's a lot I, of work. I, Mine is mainly yeah. cosmetic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. No, and it's like it's it's daunting, but I'm going I'm going to do it. Like I have, you know, and I talked to my mom about it. She's like, even if you just do a wall a day, you know, mm-hmm. we have all the time in the world because right. we're going <laughs> to promo anyway. this morning. We're going to be at home for another month or so. Mm-hmm. So um, mm-hmm. I have time to really spend on do-it-yourself pro- projects. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. that's working sure. out on my own because, uh, you know, for a while, it, it's been hard for me to really get into the home workout thing. I do it, but I don't have the same motivation I do. Mm-hmm. I had a as I did when I was at a gym because right. I had a schedule, I had a routine. I would wake up, mm-hmm. do my thing, put on my, put on my workout clothes and, and go either to meet with my trainer or go to the gym. And when I'm at the gym, I'm focused on just doing gym stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at home. I have so many distractions mm-hmm. that, you know, <laughs> the phone will ring or Amazon's at the door, <laughs> right. you know, um, there's so many distractions something going on at home. Yeah. There's always something yeah. going on at home. So it's really always. been a challenge for me. Like I bought a Peloton bike even, but it's just, I don't have the same, I, I do it. Don't get me wrong. I do it, but it's not with the same enthusiasm mm-hmm. as I did it with the, you know, I worked out with my trainer or when I went to the gym, I, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's very different for me. So I'm trying to still get into that groove. So do you do you work out every day or three days or do you focus meaning while you're at home now do you focus on you know strength one day and cardio another mm-hmm. or kind of how have you been able to solidify the workout that you are you know able to put in place? Well, um, I have some weights here, but not like the weights that I was doing at the gym. So I'm doing more mm-hmm. mind body, not mind body. Like I like. Um, like bar classes right now, I'm doing like Tracy, not to mention a brand, but I'm doing Tracy Anderson method. I, mm-hmm. I like her stuff because she focuses it focuses on the part of the body that women like to focus on. Like we do a lot of hip and glute glute movements, mm-hmm. so I like that. Um, like I said, it has a Peloton bike, so that's how I've been getting my cardio in lately. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, when, when the weather changes, I'll probably run outside because they have they have an app where they um you can listen to the app for outdoor runs too so mm. i do that i also have a bicycle um that maybe it's the parks because i don't like street bike riding mm-hmm. <laughs> so i'll you know if it one of the parks they reopen the parks at some point i'll do that but um i was yeah that's I do, i'm doing that for now but i'm sure it'll change 
at some point. Right. I, I change, I switch it up all the time. So um, today sure. I'll, I'm going to do the the bike, and then tomorrow I'll probably do some strength ex- strengthening exercises. Right. So so so, I so just you do a little. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Cece. No, go ahead, Daniel. No, I was just going to say it sounds like you switch it up each uh, every other day and uh, to make it interesting for yourself and. Uh, that sounds like a, a very wise move, especially being quarantined like we are, you know, f- kind of finding out what works for you and, and running with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a pretty good idea of what does work for me. Like I said, it's just a matter of um, doing what, you know, we're, we're doing what I can with what I have. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a jump mm-hmm. rope also, um, so I plan to do that. But I've always been the kind of person to try different things. Like, I never stick, like, weights are a constant, but it might be, you know, doing them in a different way. Like, I might work with, uh, take one class for a while, and then I'll take, I'll work with another trainer for a little while. And, like, I, I like variety with my workouts. Right. And um, the things I want to focus on, I want to focus on flexibility. So I'm trying to incorporate more yoga, but... I will say that during this quarantine, there are a plethora of things available online that don't Mm, cost anything. YouTube, Zoom, there's there's just so many things available. If you really want to do, like, I tell people, you know, like people say, oh, I don't know what to do. I want to work out. I'm like, if you really want to work out, you will, because everything's right there. You just have to (laughs) want it. And I I'm one of those people that. I am um, not only because I do it for a living now, but I tell people I'm too vain not to work out. (laughs) So uh, vanity keeps me going with the workout. So um, yeah, it's it's been, but it's not the same. Like I'm in my fifties now, so what I did, what worked when I was 42, does not necessarily work at Mm -hmm. 53. Like it's like I have to have to do things differently, or and I might not get the same results. So, but I still do it because. What about your eating? Um, Great I eat, question. Um, I follow because of my psoriasis, because I have an autoimmune condition. I try to follow the paleo way of eating. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of paleo, but paleo diet is uh, it's also called the hunter and gatherer diet. It's mainly small amounts of high quality meat, wild caught seafood. No grains, no legumes, that means no beans, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no soy, no refined sugar, no potatoes, no refined flour. So basically my meals are a protein and vegetables. Like tonight I'm going to have salmon and I'll probably have some spinach or a salad. Um, but I don't, I try to stay away from grains. Okay. Like, that means uh, no rice, uh, no couscous, no quinoa, no no grain. Angelique and Cece, I, I hate to do this, especially since uh, Angelique was talking about the cave woman diet um, <laughs> that we have about a, a minute and 30 seconds left. So I just wanted to give you a warning. The clock okay. is okay. flying. I just by. have I have one I have one follow up question, um, and we can be really quick. Uh, I know that you, as far as BMW, you were the, let me see, I have it written down, Women of Excellence. Can you just mm-hmm. just talk a little bit about, like, 15 seconds, tell us, like, what that felt like? Because I've seen the footage of you in, in Harlem, and you were at the Haberdashy, and you were looking like oh. a diva. Like, talk about that really quick. <laughs> no, it was really a full circle moment for me to be honored for, not only where I was, but where I was going, where I was at the time. And sometimes when you're in the middle of things and you're just living your life, you don't realize. 30 what, seconds. Have you been fired? Have how you've inspired someone else? So my right. previous uh, career and the, tran- the transition and what I'm doing now has, has inspired a lot of people. And I'm, I'm just honored by that because um, I don't, I, I really sit down and think about it. I'm Ten seconds. All the time. Ten seconds, ladies. Okay. Uh, it was it was an amazing experience. And thank you for having Angelique, me. Angelique, can you 
and, and thank you for being on the show. And thank you, CC and Angelique. Can you give your uh, web address so that our readers can stay in contact with you? Yes. Um, my main platform is Instagram at Angelique A N G E L I Q U E M I L E S at Angelique Miles. My website is AngeliqueMiles.com, and I'm the same name on Facebook, Twitter, wherever. But Instagram is where you can really find me, Angelique Miles. Thank you. Thank you, Angelique, and thank you, CC. Thank you, Angelique. Thank you, guys. And okay. thank you, listeners. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.